The Cavalcade of America, presented by DuPont. moment you will hear Don Voorhees and his orchestra in another episode of the Cavalcade of America in Music, presented by DuPont. This evening we will take a musical trip tracing the tuneful development of American operetta and musical comedy from the turn of the century to this very moment. Later in the program you will hear a story of chemistry, showing the importance of chemical research in the everyday life of all of us. How products developed by DuPont chemists illustrate their pledge, better things, for better living through chemistry. Tell me, pretty maiden, are there any more at home like you? We're listening in on Floridora, the casino theater in New York, 36 years ago. The famed Floridora sextet was the rage of the town. Floridora was a forerunner of our modern musical comedy. But more typical of those days was the operetta with flowing melody, such as Victor Herbert's music from The Fortune Teller. It was about 1916 before there was any noticeable change in the spirit of operetta music. The tunes became just a little gayer, a bit more daring in their rhythms. Remember Rudolph Brimmel's operetta, Katinka, and its beautiful song, Alice Holiday? New York, 1917. Three men with good imagination, P.G. Wallace, Guy Bolton, and Jerome Kern, began writing one successful musical comedy after another. Oh Boy, Very Good Eddie, Have a Heart, Leave It to Jane, and a lot more. These shows were lighter, their pattern was different, more liberties were taken with the plot, there was more dancing and comedy, but melody still held sway. After the opening night of Oh Boy... Everyone was humming Jerome Kern's hit song, Till the Clouds Roll By. Operetta and musical comedy weren't all. There was a third type of production for the entertainment of the musical theater goer in those days. The Ziegfeld Follies was in its heyday. No plot, but lots of music, dancing, comedy sketches, and beautiful young ladies. In rehearsing the Follies of 1919, a certain episode was cut out, which meant wasting an elaborate set of costumes and scenery. 
This was too much for Mr. Ziegfeld, so he asked Irving Berlin to write a song to go with the extra costumes and scenery. Irving Berlin delivered the song. The girls paraded around the stage. John Steele sang, and another hit was born. A pretty girl is like a melody. like a melody, was something new and different, and it started the Pretty Girl Cycle, one of the first of which was Irene, from the 1919 musical comedy of the same name. Remember? <laughs> then along came Mary the show that introduced that favorite song, The Love Nest. And Sally, the musical comedy success which skyrocketed Marilyn Miller to stardom. Jerome Kern's music includes the ever-popular Look for the Silver Lining. In 1920, we have the big review, musical comedy, and operetta in full swing. Four years later, in 1924, one of the big hits was from George White Scandals, George Gershwin's Somebody Loves Me.
1925, a new note was sounded by younger members of the Theater Guild when they produced the Gary Gaieties, first of the intimate reviews. It was Gary Gaieties that brought out the distinctly different music and lyrics of Richard Rogers and Lawrence Hart, whose songs have helped make many hit shows ever since. One of the charming Gary Gaiety songs was this one, Mountain Greenway. <laughs> The 20s were great days in the theater, all right. Maybe that fact had something to do with the naming of a 1929 musical play with music by Vincent Humans. They called the show Great Day, and the songs soon became big hits. Listen to the title number, and you may catch some of the high spirit and exuberance that existed in the late 20s. Great Day. <laughs> chandelier. It makes music. It's a delightful moment in the musical love story called The Cat and the Fiddle Goers to the Globe Theater in New York throughout the 1931-32 season, and which later delighted motion picture audiences throughout the country. Book was by Otto Harbach, the music by Jerome Kern, and it marked a decided advance in the technique of musical shows. One of the loveliest melodies in The Cat and the Fiddle was The Night Was Made for Love. In 1932 came Gay Divorce with Fred Astaire as the star and songs by the brilliant Cole Porter. While the show was being put together, there was a question about one particular song, Night and Day. The vote finally was, leap it in. And everybody gave thanks a few days later when the whole country began singing and playing Night and Day. <laughs>
president. That takes us back four years to the last election year and the birth of another brand new idea in musical entertainment. George S. Kaufman and Moya Riska wrote a political satire called A V.I. Sing. George Gershwin wrote the music and his brother Ira wrote the lyrics. This daring, tongue-in-cheek sort of hotcha Gilbert and Sullivan was a success from the start. In fact, it won the 1932 Pulitzer Award of the I Sing Baby. Just a block away from where I'm standing this minute, Ray Bolger, Luella Deer, and Tamara Giva are putting on their makeup ready to give another performance of the East Musical of this season, On Your Toes. The show is full of delightful songs by Rogers and Hart, including one that seems to be especially popular. There's a small hotel. century to September 22nd, 1936, observing many of the changes and developments in music of the American theater. Are there any more steps we should take? Emphatically, yes. For without hearing some of the beautiful and stirring music that Jerome Kern wrote for Showboat, we would be neglecting a production which many feel is the greatest of all American musical shows. The story came from Edna Ferber's famous novel. Oscar Hammerstein II did the libretto and lyrics. And Jerome Kern wrote music that stamps him as one of the most gifted composers in American history. So Showboat opened in 1927. Its music is as fresh and exciting today as it was that memorable first night, when even blasé critics joined everyone else in thunderous approval of the American musical. Played by Don Voorhees and his orchestra, the musical themes from Showboat.
chemistry this evening has to do with rayon, a wonder of chemistry that has stimulated thousands of businesses and has made dreams come true for millions of women who admire lovely fabrics. Rayon ranks with the automobile and the radio in the speed of its development and in the way it has opened a wide new field of employment. In the early days of the industry, rayon was a luxury that few could afford, and many rayon fabrics sold for as much as $20 a yard. Gowns made from these fabrics were priced as high as $300 a piece. But chemists went to work and found ways of making rayon less expensive and at the same time improved it year after year. In America, DuPont chemists played a large part in this progress. Out of ideas which began in the chemical laboratories, rayon has grown to be America's third most important textile. Only wool and cotton surpass it. In 1921, America used 20 million pounds of rayon. In 1936, our nation's textile industry will use 300 million pounds. Recently, DuPont introduced a startling new development, a rayon filament much finer than silk, so fine indeed that one single pound of yarn would make a filament 2,500 miles in length, long enough to reach all the way from New York to San Francisco. Being man-made, the ingenious uses and effects of rayon are limited only by man's genius. And man has done marvelous things with rayon, especially in the weaving of transparent velvet, a worldwide fashion, was born in rayon. Not long ago, DuPont created spun rayon, a yarn of great usefulness. When woven, it gives wool effect and is unusually comfortable for indoor wear. And although moderately priced, many fabrics of DuPont spun rayon duplicate the beauty of finest cashmere. No wonder fashionable shops everywhere find a major share of their fashions in rayon, in smart dresses, in underthings, in men's suits for summer, in men's shirts and suit lining, in a wide and beautiful range of decorative fabrics, in hats and gloves, in fabrics by the yard. Rayon brings better fashions for better living to almost every family. The story of rayon, therefore, in which DuPont has played so important a part, is another apt illustration of the DuPont pledge, better things for better living through chemistry. You're invited to join us again next Wednesday at the same time for another program in this summer series of the Cavalcade of America in Music, presented by DuPont. Don Voorhees and his orchestra will trace the development of modern orchestra music. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.